All right, I want to make a real quick video here destroying this 1830 pre-trib rapture lie. All right, I'm going to make three points here very quickly. Number one, when you hear the statement, there is no mention of a pre-trib rapture prior to 18th, 1830 with John Nelson Darby, um, you know that you're talking to somebody that has absolutely no clue what they're talking about. Um, that is an absolute statement that there is no mention of a pre-trib rapture before 1830. Right? To make a statement like that, you would have to have read everything that's ever been printed or written by hand by a Christian. You'd have to talk to every single one, every Christian that's ever lived, prior to 1830. Okay? You can't make a statement like that. That's an absolute statement that requires 100% absolute proof. That, and you don't have that. So somebody makes that kind of a statement and they can say, well, you know, there's nobody mentioned it before 1830. You don't know that. You can't prove that. Point number two, they'll say, the church has always been post-trib. Well, that's partially true, uh, but you need to define what church you're talking about. This one, the Roman Catholic Church, has always taught that the church would go through a final time of purification. And I've proved this in so many different videos, but you can look it up yourself. See, the Catholic Church teaches that they replace Israel, okay, first and foremost. They the nation of Israel is done away with. Now it's God's church, the Catholic church that's there and, and everything. But there's coming a time of a false pope and an anti-pope, whatever you want to call him. And in this time, the church is going to be purified. And of course, if you understand Bible prophecy, um, what they're saying is that this anti-pope or whatever is probably Francis right now, or maybe another one. I'm not sure of the timing of it. But when the Christ comes, the Antichrist, Bible believers know him to be the Antichrist, the Catholics are going to accept him as Jesus Christ. And then the whole world is going to go back to a pre-Vatican II type Catholicism, very radical Catholicism that's going to seek to go out and destroy pretty much everybody else and forcibly convert everybody. And uh, they will be getting along with the nation of Israel, the Jews, for the first part, the first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe that. And then the Antichrist is going to cause the sacrifice and ablation to cease, and he's going to set himself up in the temple to be worshipped all right, as the ultimate pope. All right. So that's what we believe as Bible-believing Christians. But you see, when they say, when somebody comes out and they say there's no pre-trib rapture, uh, the church was never pre-trib. This is what they're referring to right here. Again, ask them. Ask them. They say, oh, uh, the church has always been, okay, what are the writings? Where are the writings of Bible-believing Christians before 1830 that were saying the church is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble? Where are they? They're not going to show them to you. And thirdly, the real issue here is, uh, when was the rapture, pre-trib rapture mentioned first? Uh, that's not the question. What do the scriptures teach? Okay. And I've done quite a few studies over, I think it's over 100, 140 different sermons now on the issue of the pre-trib rapture, more properly called being called up before the time of Jacob's trouble. And I've done a lot of studies and I've gone over every single point that's ever been raised by any post-tribber, post-trib pre-wrath, whatever else. No glory to me. It's just something that I've focused on in my ministry. And it just it's easy to destroy their arguments. So very, very simple. But you see, these people that hold to this post-trib thing, they're lost. They're lost. I mean, you can be deceived early on. I'm, I'll have some grace, as I've said in other studies. But you get these people that are just militant, hardcore post-trib, but we're going to go through this time, uh, you don't understand salvation. You don't understand how the whole thing works. And uh, you're thinking that you, I mean, you're, you put your faith in a God that's literally going to put you, a righteous person that's in his body, through his judgment. How does that work? Okay, that's, that's a real big problem for you there. And another point I want to raise on this whole post-trib thing is, post-tribism, I've dealt with these people for many, many years, um, well over 10 years uh, in full-time ministry. And uh, the thing I've seen over and over again is that post-trib uh, rapturism, whatever you, you know stripe you want to make it, whether you go through the whole thing or you go halfway through or whatever else, you get into any of that stuff, and uh, it's a gateway to other false doctrines. Uh, you'll start to go against the nation of Israel. You'll become a, a replacement theology. You'll start to go against eternal security. You'll start to go against a lot of other things, dispensationalism. Um, it's a gateway to false doctrine when you go post-trib.
So uh, whenever you hear somebody bring up this thing of, oh, there was no mention before 1830, uh, they've already lost the argument. Okay, uh, You say, well, uh, the scriptures are my authority, not who said what. So uh, watch out for that argument. Uh, don't fall for the lies of the post-trib crowd.